Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna do some more beta flight. In fact, we're gonna go over the failsafe tab. Once again, I've got my old trusty TBS Source One. I'm gonna get this thing plugged into the computer and we're gonna get it connected up to beta flight. I'm gonna wait for my COM port to become available and then I'm gonna click connect. Now that the quad is connected, I'm going to go over to my failsafe tab. Wait a minute, I don't have a failsafe tab. What do we do now? Oh my goodness, no big deal. We're just gonna shoot over here to the top right where it says enable expert mode. We're gonna turn on that switch and you'll see we have a few more things available now. Amongst that, one of those is fail safe. So let's go ahead and click on that tab and take a look. Okay, inside the fail safe tab, getting started, I'm gonna tell you, there's absolutely nothing in here you need to change. By default, the Betaflight devs have done a pretty good job of making sure that these settings are gonna help keep you safe. Nonetheless, we're gonna go over a few options in here, uh, maybe a few things you might consider changing, but this is something that if you don't really know what you're doing, you're probably gonna wanna leave a lot of this where it is. I recommend testing this out, of course, outside in a safe environment. What you're gonna do is you're gonna plug power into your quad and have your transmitter on. You're gonna make sure that everything's communicating correctly, and then you're gonna turn your transmitter off. Once the transmitter is off, you're gonna make sure that the quad essentially goes dead, the props are no longer spinning, that it's no longer trying to communicate with the transmitter, and that it's no longer trying to fly. As long as all this checks out, you're A-OK, -okay, and you really don't need to do anything else. But like I said earlier, nonetheless, we're gonna take a look at a couple of these settings. The first part of that fail save essentially is what is going to happen immediately upon lost communication. And then the second half of that fail save is what's going to happen if that communication is lost for an extended period of time. Essentially, you can see here on our first setting in stage two settings that this equals a tenth of a second. So essentially, right now by default, we're waiting four tenths of a second before the stage two fail safe is going to kick in. A few things to look at on the first side of our fail safe. This you don't really need to change. These are your pulse lengths. This is what the flight controller is gonna be looking to from the receiver. Uh, as long as it's receiving signals within this range, it's going to assume that things are communicating and working properly and it will not fail safe. Maybe if you have a spectrum receiver that falls outside of this range a little bit, you might need to make some changes here, but honestly, I really kind of never had a problem. You know, really the Betaflight guys, they know what they're doing, and I think this is a safe place to leave this. As we scroll down, you do have some options and channels here as far as what's gonna happen uh, if the flight controller does stop communicating with the receiver and of course the radio. Uh, some of the changes that I do like to make here, uh, maybe on my failsafe here, so auxiliary three is my failsafe switch. I might set this to a value. I know 1500 is enough, um, but I might wanna set this to a range that's gonna automate the failsafe, essentially, so maybe it's gonna start the beeper for me um, when I am failsafe. So if I've lost that communication, and I can't turn the beeper on with a switch, this is gonna start the beeper automatically, for example. Again, maybe I wanna set my disarm. So I'll set a value here of like 1100, which is gonna be on the low side. So essentially by setting this value, if it loses communication, what's gonna happen here is I'm going to automatically disarm and I'm going to automatically start beeping my beeper. Depending on your configuration, you might have some other options in here, but that's the gist of this, and that's kind of basically what I would change in this menu. Moving to the right, you have your fail safe switch action. This is going to be the fail safe that is enabled by the switch itself. So if you do have a switch enabled to activate your fail safe, uh, maybe to help, maybe if you're in a situation and you need to disarm and deactivate that quad, uh, you can throw your fail safe on a switch, and then you know you're going to be disarmed. Other than that, with our stage two settings, you kind of don't want to change this. Uh, and the reason is, if you select this to land, well, a few bad things can happen. One, this is going to take off in any direction based on the throttle value that you're giving the aircraft. If you have this set at 1500, essentially that's mid throttle and whatever direction the aircraft is facing. So if it's upside down, essentially, and you fail safe, you're gonna go half throttle directly into the ground. Um, but it could go any direction. It could go off sideways, and it could go off sideways into somebody's face, and that is never a good thing. 
So I strongly recommend just leaving this at drop. I know this doesn't seem ideal, but this is going to prevent the props from spinning. The aircraft is just simply going to fall. You might break something, but the reality is it's coming down anyway, so just let it fall. Once you're happy with your settings, you're just going to go ahead and click save and reboot, and that's it. Real quick and simple, there's the fail safe tab. Really the gist of the story is you really don't need to touch anything while you're getting started, um, but I would recommend that you take a look at some of the settings and configuration inside of this tab. Of course, if you guys have any questions, whether it's beta flight related or not, please feel free to reach out. Of course, I'm going to try to answer those questions as best I can. But it's time for me to go. I've got some other things to do today. If you can, check out Hot Dog FPV at hotdogfpv.com. Love those guys. Maybe I can convince you to buy something. I'm still throwing up pictures on Instagram on a regular basis. So if you want a behind the scenes look as to what's going on, that might be a good place to get a little bit more info on my channel. But I'm done. Time to wrap it out. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.